How you doing? I promise you I'll get back to you relatively soon. This is video number two. It's March 15, 2020, and we're still dealing with the coronavirus. Uh, it hasn't really changed a whole lot in the last couple of days. However, some of you are going to have to make a decision as to whether or not you engage or you stand down and wait, ride this thing out as agents. And many of you are talking about telesales, non-face-to-face products, and these type of things. And so I thought I'd come back out again and talk about uh, telesales, why it seems to be a really good idea, but really it isn't that great of an idea. Telesales seems to make sense, but really it only works for the big insurance companies. And the numbers prove it. If you haven't done it yet, subscribe to my channel now and hit that bell down below for instant notifications. Things are moving quite fast, so you really want to be getting the instant updates. Look, so let's take a look at why the numbers prove that tail sales isn't good for you, the agent, now during the coronavirus outbreak, and it won't be good afterwards. The truth is, it was really never good. The retention of this business is horrible. I've had many people that have come from telesales, gone back to telesales, and left the industry because there's a lot of things they don't tell you. One is less than 20% of that business stays on the books past the ninth month period of your advanced commissions. So if you're brand new to this industry, we get paid what we call advanced commission. They can't find enough agents that are willing to go out there and sell life insurance to make 70% or 50% or whatever uh, contract rate you've agreed to uh, to with your IMO. If you take the monthly payment on average, which is about 85 bucks, and they paid you 50% of that, you're talking about 35 or 40 dollars advance. They're not going to find anybody uh, willing to do that. So in the industry, many years ago, they went to what we call an advanced on unearned commissions. So they would take the 85 dollars a month, which is about the average premium, times it by 12, and come up with a figure of about 1,080 dollars, and of that. Your, con, your commission rate would, would apply. So if you're at 70% commission rate, you, it, that comes out to be about $746. And then of that, they would advance you nine months, right? So if you made the sale in January, you'd be paid through September. So that's about a 75% advance on your 75%. You still earn the whole commission as long as the, the product or the policy stays on the books for 12 months, right? Here's the problem with telesales, is it doesn't stay on the books. This is and always has been a relationship type business, which means face-to-face, kneecap to kneecap, in their home, in your office, whatever you choose to do, or however you choose to do business, that's how it's always been. These telesales or digital sales companies are part of all over the place, and what they don't tell you is the fall off on that business is horrendous, which means you're going to get a chargeback. And if you write too much of this kind of business and you can't pay back the unearned portion of your commission advance, you're going to be vectored. And then you put your license at risk. You won't be able to work for any insurance company and you can eventually lose your career as a result of getting too much into, I wouldn't get into them at all, but you get too much into this digital sales, telesales market because the numbers prove. And look, the reason why these big companies can do that is because they're pouring a lot of business in and they have agents that do nothing but call, call, and resell and resell that same client over and over again. And you and I as agents, we don't have that capacity or bandwidth or time to do it. So it ends up not working out for us in terms of the numbers. And the truth is it really doesn't work out for them either. But they, the, reason, the only reason why they can make it work is they have staff on hand to, like I said, to continue to resell that client. And you had to decide, you know, is it worth it? Do I really want to work in that kind of business? You got to wonder why you would even do telesales or non face to face sales, since really this business is all about like, know, and trust, and it ever has been. And in my opinion, you can't ever do that on the phone. If it comes down to you're just a telemarketer to those folks, what is it? Where's the relationship? The next guy that calls them on the telephone is $5 cheaper. Man, they're gone. Because you haven't built a relationship with them. They had no obligation to, to stick with you. They had no loyalty. I mean, my agents leave behind what I call an inoculation letter to really kind of build a relationship with that client. So if another agent tries to come in and re- replace that product, that client's going to call our agent and give, us a, give them a chance to at least save the business. You're not going to do that on the phone, which is why I've never feared the, uh, the digital sales or telesales market to ever you know, replace us as agents. And a lot of these companies are run by you know really unethical managers or owners and they treat the seniors and the agents like crap in my opinion also another reason to not resort to telesales or digital sales 
now or at any time really, is these companies historically pay a very, very uh, low commission. It's just another reason you or I should not get involved. Not to mention they teach very high pressure sales techniques to their agents. Remember why you and I do this business. Aside from doing something great for people, we also do it for residual income. And some of these companies, you're not going to be vested for many years. Most are at least three to five years, right? They're playing the odds here that you won't stick around long enough to even pay your renewals. Do you really want to work for a company like that? I mean, seriously. Also, in order to have even a shot at succeeding in telesales, you got to put a lot of sales into the system knowing most of that business won't stick. You're not going to get past your advance. It kind of feels like you're trying to shove in five new sales to make up the four sales that canceled last week. Look, look at it like this. You're full speed ahead in your power boat and someone reaches up and turns the engine off and suddenly that boat comes to a stop. What happens? Yep, you got it. The wake that you created now overcomes your sitting boat and you take on water and your boat sinks. <laughs> that sinking feeling results in charge bags and money you owe and if you can't pay a vector. And many of you don't even realize that because I talked to you on the phone and they go, well, I got this thing called a vector and they wouldn't hire me. Of course not because a vector indicates that you're a deadbeat, that you didn't pay your charge back. Now, many of you want to blame the IMO or blame the bad, the leads are bad and you think think you the, the way you can get justice back to that on that IMO but selling you those crappy leads is by not paying your charge back you can they have the upper hand all they're going to do is file a vector it's going to hit your credit bureau it's going to destroy your credit and that vector all the insurance companies check that vector agency it's like a credit bureau for agents and if you're on there you're not getting a job with another insurance company so in the end you're going to have to pay that vector back in order to continue to work in some industry and if you don't pay it it puts your license at risk not to mention, you spend a great deal of money on leads, and if you put this on your credit card, now you owe money for the leads. So now you're in debt both to the credit card company, but also to the insurance carrier you wrote that business with. As far as the coronavirus, things really haven't changed since my last video. We all need to practice common sense. Things I've done for over 30 years, I've always carried some hand sanitizer and mouthwash in my car, and that hasn't changed and it's not going to change. Please don't ask me why mouthwash has anything to do with the coronavirus. It doesn't, but it's going to call personal hygiene if you're sitting very close to someone else talking about a product. The last thing you want to have is bad breath. So again, remember those things when you're going into a home. When you come out of home, use that hand sanitizer, wash your hands, do the same thing you and I have been doing for a very long period of time. And hey, listen, if necessary, wear a mask. I've talked to many of you about this and whether or not we should be running appointments at all. And that really is a personal decision for you. I don't really want to get on a video here and tell you what you should and shouldn't be doing. But honestly, if you're not willing to run appointments right now, then you've got to ask yourself why you got into this business in the first place. This is a business whereby we help people that have asked for our help. So remember, this is an airborne disease. So again, use common sense. Don't get real close to people. Don't sneeze in the vicinity of people. I hear that sneeze can carry 10 feet, right? So this three to five or six foot circle, uh, social distancing or whatever it's called for the time we live in, right? And listen, you're going to be at risk no matter what. Even if you have to wear a mask, I found with my agents, it makes people feel safer and more willing to allow you to come into their home if they know you're taking this seriously and that they are protected as you are protected. Look, the medical staff isn't standing down. They're out there taking care of people every single day. The people doing the drive through swabbing and all that stuff, they're just dressed apart, right? They're dressed for protection. That You and I need to do the exact same thing so we're not denying people the right to have their families protected because you and I aren't willing to go out there and do our job, do what we're paid to do, do what we got a license for. But lead flow is way up as a result of people being checked about their mortality and they're concerned now more than ever that they don't have the protection. And it just reminds us that we don't control when our time is up. And to think so, you're fooling yourself, right? You know, for myself and Angela, we are running appointments as many of our team are. In fact, our numbers actually in the last two weeks have been you know, on a rise, higher than normal in sales activity and the number of families that we are protecting. Because again, it puts the awareness out there. Remember, life insurance is an event-based business. The event right now on the front page of every news channel and 
you know, social media is this coronavirus disease. And so, and then the number of people that are dying from it worldwide. The re- fact of the matter is re- the numbers are, are fairly low in the United States and more people are getting killed in car accidents that are being killed by the coronavirus, but there's no pandemic. There's no fear uh, being sold about car accidents right now. It's all about the coronavirus. So it puts people on edge and it checks their mortality. Here's the facts. If you can get in the home right now, your closing ratio should be through the roof because they obviously want it right or they wouldn't let you in their house because they're seeing what's going on in the news. I can remember years ago when I right out of college, I sold cars. And if we had people on the lot during a rain shower, <laughs> the, the sale people nearly took the door down trying to get out in the parking lot quicker than the other salesmen so that we could help those folks because anyone walking around in a car lot in the rain was serious. They generally bought. It was it was like 90% of the time they would buy a car. So we knew that was a guaranteed sale. It's the same thing here. People that are willing to book an appointment with you really want it and really need it. Here are the numbers. The agents that we have that are always grinding it out are having great weeks, and their numbers might be slightly up. The ones that are spare time or even part time are about the same or maybe even slightly lower. As always, the ones that want to succeed don't make excuses, and they rise above the chatter and the panic and find ways to get it done, primarily because we don't have a choice, right? I mean, how many people have the ability to sit down you know, for four months without a paycheck? A thousand bucks that they're talking about giving away? I, look, I, what they're willing to give you, they're also willing to take away. That's why we're in this business. So those of you who logged on here today, thinking that I'm going to talk about the coronavirus and how to be safe, what I really want to talk about is what the coronavirus should make you feel in terms of being unemployed, laid off, or furloughed. So let's get back to my point here before I get off on a tangent and get on my soapbox. 90% of the business that is written is written by 10% of the agents. That is pretty much the same as always. Folks are willing to make excuses and really don't need to support themselves or their families will buy into the media panic and stand down. That's not me. It never has been me. I'm a bit of a renegade in that respect. I've been doing this for a very long time, been through many different viruses, and never caught one yet. And my job is to put myself on the line for others so their families are better off because I met them. And I don't plan on stopping now. Here's the reality. We're in the uncertain business. Our business is protecting people from the one thing everyone will experience, which is death right? So to sit on the sidelines right now and not get out and protect as many families as allow us to help them is really silly. The side benefit of us putting ourselves on their front line, what looks like a biotechnical war right now, is we do get paid very well. Consider it hazard pay. Here are the facts. Most people recover. Less than three and a half percent die from this. And most all of those are people that are elderly, over 65, and already have some type of respiratory issues or diseases. If you fall into that category, I'd sit it out, right? I'd sit this one out. If not, go out and do what we get paid to do, and at the same time, prosper while many others are out of work in fear of where their next paycheck will come from and when. This is a dangerous time for many, but if you use your common sense and what your needs are, if you can afford to sit this one out and don't need the money and don't feel an obligation to go out and help those who are asking for help, then don't. It's really a personal decision. But honestly, I think you have to ask yourself, if you heard someone yelling out, hey, I need help, help me, help me, will you please help me, are you going to keep walking on by or are you willing to do whatever you can to help those that ask? See, that's a personal decision. I'm going to leave that one up to you. In the meantime, If you want to get into an industry whereby you can't be furloughed, you can't be laid off, but they got the casinos closed in Las Vegas right now, right? And all these high income earners that, you know, two weeks ago, you know, had their security all wrapped up in, in, you know, in in a job that they felt like, you know, I I can't, I can't be on straight commission. I got to have job security. There isn't any job security when you're working for somebody else because when the federal government or your employer can close the business and furlough the workers and throw you a thousand bucks, I don't call that job security, right? Here's the difference. I can still go out. I can. St- the lead flow is up all across the country. I can go where the leads are. I can grab some leads, right? I may have to work a little harder right now to find people that are willing to let me into their house, 
but I will find some people to let me in the house. I will give them some protection that they asked for, and I will make a very good living, and I am in total control of my financial destiny. I'm not sitting at home worried right now for two, three, four months if I'm ever going to get back to that job or if they're ever going to open their job. Maybe that small business even goes out of business, right? I can't be laid off. I can't be kicked to the curb. Many of you realize that right now that corporate job that you have or had was never security. The security lies in, in us. It lies in your own skills. See, right now, my financial condition is in my total control. I can sit down or I can go out there and put myself out, out on the line and go protect families and prosper by, the, by the, the, uh, their fear mongering that's going on. That's in my control. First and foremost, because of this industry, I get paid three ways, right? One, I get paid high upfront commissions. Two, I get paid residual income, and which, by the way, is coming in right now every single day, even if I decide to not work during these times my family is going to be fine, right? And I, I talked to many of you, and I, and I even talked to our, our own agents. I said, remember why we got in this business. We got in this business so that times like these, we're, our lives not shattered financially because we're building something. Day to day, you know, being in your business is not always fun if you're in business for yourself, right? But we're building something. You may be a high-income earner selling timeshares, selling cars, selling real estate, but you ain't building nothing. When they turn off the faucet, you're busted, and we already know most people don't even save anything. So if you live in paycheck to paycheck, even as a high-income earner, in two or three or four weeks, you're busted. Your savings account's wiped out because many of us live paycheck to paycheck, right? My family will be fine because I've got a large amount of residual income that's coming in every day. My deposits the last couple of days have been higher than they have in the last couple of months, right? So that's what we need to remind ourselves as to why we got in this business when the times get tough and they will get tough. You can look at this time right now and say it's a little tough. I look at this time right now saying this is what we were built for. This is why they got in this industry. People need you and I right now, now more than ever. Forbes magazine came out with an article last week and said the two number one searches on the internet right now is toilet paper, which I haven't figured out yet, and number two, life insurance, right? It's like selling, you know, real estate when, when, when you're down to the last five homes. It's, you know, it's, you know, the sales are a given if you just get out there and do it. So change your mindset on this. You're going to change your life forever, financially, most likely. Okay? Again, the last one is, okay, we talked about high upfront commissions. We talked about residual income. The last one is passive income. By building, and you don't hear me talk about passive income much because as soon as I talk about it, we resort to talking about building an agency. And, we, and then we start going back to thinking about these people that are building agencies where, you know, they're, they're not leading from the front. They're simply, you know, um, involved in this, uh, you know, recruit, recruit, recruit. Don't, let, don't get those two things out of order, those three things out of order mentality. And they're just the MLMers. I'm talking about leading from the front, put your name on applications and not be, have your income capped if you don't recruit or not have your income capped if you, uh, your team that you have recruited isn't doing anything. You need to be able to advance to the top commission, get paid and promoted based on your own pin, right? And if you want to build your team, you can do so and get compensated. But to cap your income at 80% if you don't recruit or if, you, if those recruits don't produce right away because they won't, there's no money in early recruiting or early agency building, none. You got to go out there and learn it first by putting your name on an application, and then you can set the example and leave them front. That's the only way I ever endorse people that are building an agency, right? But you know, look, just understand when I talk when I talk about building your own agency and I talk about that passive income, I'm talking about not doing it because you're forced to, but doing it because you want that third stream of income. And while you're doing it, you can get yourself promoted to the top comp plans by your own pen and your own production. And once that team does start doing something, you'll get paid both. It's not one or the other, it's both. And you're doing it at your own free will, not because you're forced to do so, right? That's why I feel like that's the, it's all about timing as to when you want to build your own agency. But look, while everyone else is in fear right now of what happens tomorrow, we know because we're building something that our income continues even in the face of economic uncertainty. 
So if you're not in that place, call me, text me, email me if you want to make sure you stop living in fear and build something before it's too late and this happens again and get involved in our industry. We have plenty of people that want to see you, right? And all across the country, here's the great thing about life insurance. I can go anywhere in this country. I can grab myself a non-resident license. I can plant myself in Houston, Texas. I can go to Savannah, Hilton Head, Seattle, Tacoma, Portland. Doesn't matter where I want to, where I end up. Grab some leads, go out and protect some families, and I can earn money in 48 to 72 hours. That's a fantastic occupation. It's the best feel-good job on the planet because we get paid to help people. Listen. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back in a couple of days with some more coronavirus updates. But my suggestion for you right now is watch this video a couple of times. Make a decision to where you stand. If you're not in this industry, you want to be in this industry, or more importantly, you want to build something for the future, give me a call. But dig your well before you're thirsty. Bye-bye.